Whether you say data flows or data flows, it's Power Query in the cloud. And I'm gonna give you a brief introduction about how it all works. Let's go. So I've created a demo workspace in Power BI, in the Power BI service. And it's empty, and I'm just gonna create a new data flow. So why am I doing this? What's the purpose of a data flow? And what really is it? Well, essentially Power Query, which is the tool for transforming data in Power BI, um, and is most commonly found in Power BI Desktop and in Excel, you're keeping that query inside the file. But what if you're reusing that query over and over again? Well, it'd be nice to have it centralized and then you could use that query in multiple different files. Or maybe you've got a very slow system that you're pulling data from. And rather than lots of people querying that system, you might wanna pull the data centrally into a central spot and then people can connect to that data flow. So for example, let me just create this new entity. Now entity is a name for a table, a power query table. Okay, and really a data flow is a a folder of tables. So here we have the online version of Power Query. You can connect to Excel, you can connect to folders, etc. etc. I'm going to just start off with a blank query here. And you could paste your Power Query code in. Or I'm just going to skip this step a second. And here is my Power Query window. And I'm actually just going to delete this little step. Okay, so that was me getting into this main screen, the Power Query Editor in the cloud. Right, if I go back to Power BI Desktop, I've got a Power BI Desktop file here with some queries in. I've got a OneDrive folder I'm connecting to. I'm drilling down into one of the files there called Cost Centers. I've also tapped into this other file where I'm pulling the regions and I'm doing a merge to join this region code onto the side of this table here to give me this final table. There we go, that's it. That's the table I want to use. Now the nice thing about um, data flows is I could have done that from scratch in the data flow, or if I've already built something in Power BI Desktop, I can right click and copy this last table, go into here, right click and paste. Now get a warning. It says you must use control V to paste. Okay, so I control V. And now that table, because it had all those sort of predecessor tables, all of them have come in, which is really good. Okay, if I had one just unique table, that would have come in on its own. It's then prompting me for my credentials. So I'm grabbing this data from SharePoint. So I've got to configure my connection. Uh, it'll say Microsoft account. If connect doesn't work, you may have to sign in again, um, but just click connect. It'll prompt you and then you might have to just go through the sign in option. It's not always that obvious. And don't forget, I could have just gone from scratch and started in the data flow and just gone from SharePoint folder. But if you've already built something in Power BI Desktop, just copy and paste it. Okay, so it's whirring away. And here we go, this final table is generated. Now, I am not using Power BI Premium here, so I'm quite surprised it's allowing me to do this merge. Um, merge is normally reserved for um, premium or premium per user. So just be aware of that, that you might not be able to do merge actions. Okay, so I've got my final table and these ones, the region, that's disabled, okay, it's not, it hasn't got the tick. This final table is the only one that's gonna be kicked out at the end. And let's go save and close. Sometimes this validation can take quite a while. Okay, so this validation took about 20 seconds just on that simple little table, and it's still spinning away now. But it will now prompt me to refresh um, you need to click this refresh after you've named your data flow, but you've already named it, haven't you? That final table. 
No. Tables or entities are the individual tables that are created. A data flow, think of it like a folder that holds these different tables. So let's call this the demo uh, data flow. And we'll just give it a description demo. So when I click save, you do want to click this refresh now. Otherwise, you'll find that the table is empty until you refresh it. So this is now whirring away. And if I go back to my workspace here, I'll see that here, along with any other reports or dashboards or anything else I put into this folder, you see your data flow. Okay. You can set up a schedule refresh for it as well. And there it goes, it's spinning away. I'm back into the Power BI desktop file, and now I can go get data from Power BI data flow. The very first time you do this, it'll prompt you to sign in. Okay, so we're signing in. If you're already signed in, then it'll probably just let you jump straight through. Let's have a little think about it. Connect. And now we're faced with our list. And here we go. Here's my data flow demo. There's my demo data flow. And there's my final table. It's just like a little Power Query table. And I can right click, transform, and it pulls it in as if it was another source, any other source. Okay. So it comes in via Power Query. I could do more tidy ups to it if I wanted to, um, and then load it into the data model. Um, if you happen to be jumping between different um, tenants, so as a, as a consultant, I'm working for different clients. One little tip, the, the data flow does not change when you um, swap between uh, signing in and signing out at the top here. What you have to do is you have to go to transform data, data source settings, okay, global permissions, and then just clear this data flow permissions here and then sign in again. Okay, so this sticks with whatever you signed in last. It does not link to this sign in at the top corner. Let me just focus on a couple of other little things in here. If I go back into my uh, data flow in the service. Okay, here we go. We click on it and we can click edit. Show you some really nice features that I've added recently that eventually will come to Power Query, um, but they're just able to make these changes quicker in the cloud version. So just beautiful little things like under the view tab, there's some really nice features. There's this diagram view that's in preview, which is this, okay, and you can expand these out and see visuals for the different steps. It's really nice in interface. And you can even add new transformations. Okay, so if I could add a remove column step, or if I do a step down here, it'll get added. So if I remove this one, okay, I don't need that region code anymore. This then will get added as an extra step at the top. And also these steps down the side, they've got some really nice little icons and things on there as well. You've also the, got the ability to see, rather than just the formula, let me actually minimize this to make it easier. There's the formula that we're used to seeing, but you can also see the actual sort of advanced editor script there in one hit, or you can just turn it off completely. So some really nice options. Check out data flows. Um, when you refresh a data flow, it does not automatically update the data set. So you've got to do two refreshes. Refresh the data flow, and then after that, at some point, refresh the data set. Hope you find that useful. Uh, please subscribe. And if you feel like it, give us a like. And we will catch you later. Thanks.